Disclaimer. Any content that appears in Charlando de Minas is not an investing advice. Amadeo Bonet and any of the guests are not investor advisors. We might have interest in the companies mentioned in this publication. Always assume that the speakers are biased. These episodes are just the journey of my learning in the natural resource investment. Welcome to this a very special episode of Charlando de Minas, the Spanish podcast dedicated to the mining investing, today in English. For our Spanish listeners, don't worry, this interview will be translated to Spanish and you will have access to all the information in the language of Cervantes. Today we have the pleasure to interview Mr. Bradley Langell, CEO of Gogol Resources. Gogol Resources is a Canadian gold and silver producer and explorer with projects in Mexico. The company is publicly traded in the Toronto Exchange as GGD. Brad, thanks for making time to be here. How are you? Welcome to the program. Oh, very good. Thank you. It's nice to be uh, talking to your audience this afternoon. Uh, could you please introduce yourself and tell us about your experience and background? Well, uh, education, I'm a geologist, but uh, primarily what I've been doing is uh, working in um, building mines over the last 30 years, and uh, primarily in Mexico. Uh, we built four mines down there. Uh, my function has been CEO in all these companies, and um, our expertise is not just exploration, but actually, as I mentioned, also building, uh, which requires a lot of capital. And over my career, I would have raised in excess of a, a billion and a half dollars of uh, equity capital and done several hundred million dollars of debt financings for these projects. Perfect. I mean, when we will go through, I mean, uh, the experience is perfect for the project that we will talk about and all the development that you are doing here in GoGold. Uh, now, can you please briefly describe GoGold Resources and what is the main objective of the company? Yes, um, Gogold is both a producer and an explorer and a developer. Uh, Gogold is a company that uh, was incorporated 12 years ago. It trades on the main stock exchange in Canada, and uh, it trades on the uh, QXQB in the United States. Um, we have two projects. One is our, our producing asset, which is a large tailings retreatment project in Peral, uh, Chihuahua, Mexico. Uh, there we've been operating for the last eight years. And in uh, general terms, I both, it produces approximately 2 million ounces of silver equivalent per annum. It has seven years of reserves left and should be approximately 2 million ounces a year of uh, production. Uh, but then the real driver, the real force behind the, the um, value of the company right now is our Las Ricos project in Jalisco, uh, Mexico. And that project has been uh, exploration primarily uh, since March of 2019 when we entered into the project. We acquired 26 concessions. Since then, we drilled over 200,000 meters. Um, we defined um, in uh, various stages of uh, exploration um, about 242 million silver equivalent ounces. And uh, we've consolidated additional claims. We're now up to 46 claims. Now we have, the project is called Los Ricos, but really it's two projects divided by about 15 kilometers in distance, Los Ricos North and Los Ricos South. The last big event was uh, the initial resource in Los Ricos North, which was published about a year ago. And now the focus has turned to Las Ricos South, where we already had defined 82 million ounces of silver, and we had a preliminary economic assessment that showed $295 million of 5% um, discounted um, net present value. Um, there is where all the activity over the next year, 18 months, is going to happen. Um, there we're now progressing that part of the district towards development. And we would see Good. now more ounces we're defining on a new piece that we've added, new economic um, studies. And we're we applying in the next months, several months for a permit. And we hope that um, by 
the latter part of next year will be in construction. Wow, it's a lot of lot of news. I mean, for me, one of the best things that Google does is generate value to shareholders because it, in a way, it's producing cash flow with the Parral and it's used in the exploration and development on Los Ricos. And as you said, we can divide Google in the two main projects. You know, the one is the production of the Parral, uh, where it's an open pit hip leach, and then the exploration story of the Los Ricos. Let's talk first about the Parral. Um, it's a cash flow project where you have a low grade goal, approximately 0, 0.3, 0, 0.4 grams per ton of goal. And it's producing in the open pit leach procedure in order to obtain that goal. The cash flow income, and you said that is roughly 2 million tons uh, silver equivalent. Uh, and you said that you could produce for seven years, right? More? And there is any hope that you can go uh, higher than that? Yes, it, it's been producing in the past, for the last past eight years. And it has now seven years of reserves ahead of it. So it should produce for another seven years at least. And um, it's, uh, you're, you're correct, it's a, a grade, uh, a lower grade on a silver equivalent of about 0.35, uh, sorry, on a gold equivalent, 0.35 grams. Mm -hmm. And it's an agglomerated heap leach. Um, it's, it, uh, the project is very unique in, in that we've really developed some new technology around the reprocessing of tailings or old mine waste. And this mine waste is located in the center of an old city, Peral, um, mm. uh, and it's around a mine that was mined out over the last 300 years. So the, the city wants to get these, this mine waste out of their city. We move it out of the city. We process it. Um, from an ESG perspective, it's extremely good because... Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, it's yeah. waste the residue that you take it out. Right. We take that residue out of the city. Um, so an environmental, uh, we remove that. Um, a partner on it is the city who owns those tailings. And mm -hmm. we pay them every month 75000 US dollars, which would rep represent probably about 10% of their municipal budget. And we employ 200 people. So uh, providing employment to the good jobs, employment to the community. So it, it ticks all the boxes on an ESG perspective. Um, really the all in sustaining cost is about $17 and 50 cents per silver equivalent ounce. And we'll be producing a, about 2 million ounces a year going forward. And we've been averaging around that. So um, at $19, you know, it's, it's more trading dollars. It's not making a lot of yeah. money. When yeah. it was at $25, $26 a year ago, the price of silver, it was paying for everything in our company. It was paying for our G&A. It was paying for our expiration budget on Los Ricos, which is $24 million a year. So we hope that the price of silver comes up and it will be back in the <laughs> Yeah, we all hope. We all hope that. Oh, live in hope. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that you actually uh, gave me the key for the next two questions, but uh, I will do it anyway. Sure. And probably you will just repeat repeat that answer. I mean, because uh, one of the questions was that uh, even if your revenue you know, increased because obviously uh, silver price, it was high, uh, production failed to meet expectations, and the market reacted with a big plunge in cotization. Uh, maybe the reaction of the market, it was more in terms that all of your all include sustaining costs is quite high, and then silver, it decreases significantly. Um, if, you, if you look at uh, uh, Gold Gold, and you look at the value in the company, and um, you know our value is very much underpinned by the fact that we're very, uh, very much an institutional investor company. We have probably 50% of our shareholders are institutional. And they would look at um, a Peral, although it is such a great ESG project and it does make us uh, some money, they would really look at the driver as being Los Ricos um, for the future value of the company. But 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 then yeah. but then if 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 the driver is Los Ricos and Los Ricos is going really good and we will talk about this, yeah. I mean uh, the cotization of the company. I think that it was uh, 
I mean, uh, early early this year, it was almost uh, three or four dollars, mm-hmm. and now it's two or something like that. Yeah. What do you think? What, why the market reacted in this way in a company that it's solid in a way that it's producing, that it's having an, a really excited exploration project, and that you have a I mean fifty uh, percent of the your shares it's uh, institutional. Yeah, I, I do uh, believe. Um... Corral has, has very little to do with the decline in value. The decline in value is really more around the uh, commodity price. And, it, and if you compare our chart to many of our peers and even seniors, mm-hmm. like, uh, I would throw out there an Ignico Eagle or uh, First Majestic or uh, many of those companies, you'll see very similar charts. And that's, that's driven by change in sentiment uh, around the commodity price over since um, last uh, oh, February, March. Um, so that's that's a lot of the, the downdraft in our share price and al- almost or all of the other junior producers in our space. Um, mm-hmm. that, that being said, uh, we're fortunate in that, you know, we did raise equity and we have had Peral mm-hmm. assisting us in cash flow um, over the last uh, several years, a couple of two, three years. And we're in a very, very strong balance sheet position in that we have 75 million US cash in the bank, no debt. So you take a project like Los Ricos, where others might have to slow down their, their spend, and we don't have to. I mean, we're going to keep on charging ahead and developing in Los Ricos South and getting that closer to cash flow or, or getting it to cash cash flow. And, and we're in a cyclic business. We can't do anything about the commodity price or the, the sentiment of the market, um, you know, as a, as a group, as a group yeah. of producers. Of course. So what, what we can do is try to select good projects that are good projects even in a low a commodity price. You know, they're less sensitive to that. And that's what we see from Los Ricos uh, project. It, it produce mm-hmm. low cost ounces. In fact, the cash costs of those ounces in the PEA today are eight dollars and thirty five cents in Los Ricos South. And mm-hmm. with the new, what we're finding now, with this new piece that we added on, which is a very high grade, it, it, there's a good possibility that it will go even much lower in cost. So we have the flexibility to continue to develop that because of our strong balance sheet where others might have to slow down. And uh, that will, I believe, propel us- Make a difference. Make a difference, gonna propel us forward when that sentiment around the commodity price changes. And hopefully sooner than later, um, when that changes, you'll see uh, a gold gold uh, jump ahead of the pack. Um, the other thing I'd say is, you know, you look at our institutional investors. Well, you know, we have a lot of gold focused, precious metals focused funds as institutional shareholders. They need to put the money somewhere. So where, 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 do, you, where do you put it? We're all down because of sentiment and commodity price. But if you're putting it in a gold gold, where in Las Rico South in particular right now, we're hitting really stellar results and... We have such a strong balance sheet and we're an operating company as well. So we have that talent in our company as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very good place for them to park the money. And a lot of them are deciding today because they're not having new inflows or the institutions out there, even the precious metals funds. They're not having, they're having outflows of cash from their funds. So they have to decide which ones do they sell and the ones who have weak balance sheets and, and can't continue to um, charge forward with their projects, those are probably the ones that they more think about selling. A gold gold, they just sit there and they say, okay, you know, it's relatively safe. And they're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. things and they're progressing on a technical base basis, their projects and they're on, a, on their business plan, they're progressing it even in the slow times like now. Perfect. Thank you. Um, in one of your press releases, you said that the lower production 
in the parallel, it's due to the transition between different zones in the telling deposit. Can you elaborate a little bit or explain for the ones that are not familiar with the project? Yes, um, we really have uh, two groups of tailings. And the first part were, um, well, we called it zone one uh, or the Red Hill. And that was actually in 1980s that was trucked into this location from another mine. And it had higher values of silver and, um, and you know, a slightly better economics. Now, that part of the tailing deposit, we process that. Um, it's either we've sold the metal out of it or it's sitting in inventory, you know, slowly being leached out. But then the remainder of the mine life is what's called, um, no, I had that mixed up, sorry, that was zone two. The remainder <laughs> of the mine life is zone one. And zone one, um, it's a lower grade, uh, a bit better metallurgy though, a bit better recovery rates, but you know, the margins are slightly lower on it. And that's, you know, just the reality of the deposit. But um, still, even at these prices, it makes us, you know, makes us a little bit of money. And, uh, you know, when the metal price goes up, it'll, it'll do better. Um, another thing is that when you have an operation like we have there, we're always looking for other opportunities to add other tailings that maybe be higher grade. And, um, you know, we have some things that we're working on and maybe we'll be able to increase the grade of the, uh, the tailings by bringing in some other external tailings that are much higher grade. So nice. we, we look for those opportunities. We're always trying to optimize and we're always looking for opportunities because mm -hmm. we've long since paid the capital back on, on Peral. Of course. Now we're just trying to get every dollar out that we can. Nice, nice. Then let's go to the excitement. Let's move to the Los Ricos. Uh, can you explain a little bit more detail Los Ricos as a project? And then we can go from north and south or south to north, depending. Yes, in... in um, if you were... If I was trying to describe in very general terms, Los Ricos, I would talk about a district that is a large district. And as I mentioned, it's really two districts separated by about 15 kilometers. But uh, we're finding uh, a lot of ounces. Uh, we've drilled about 200,000 meters of drilling since we entered the project in March, 2019. To describe the ounces, I would say that they are um, both open pit and bulk mm -hmm. underground ounces, and uh, but bulk bulk mining. And what I mean by bulk mining, either if it's open pit or underground, um, you know, wide uh, widths of uh, ore zones that can be mined um, very productively and at a low low cost, cost low cost per ton. Um, what's Unique about the, in Los Ricos, north would be more open pit ounces, but your grade in general would be about uh, uh, various cutoffs, but a, a cutoff I think we'd use at about um, 50 grams over equivalent per ton. It would be about 140 grams. And, and that, or in gold equivalent terms, almost two grams. For, for an open pit at that grade and, you know, strip ratios would... It's a very good grade, and, and the strip ratios are quite reasonable in the north. In the south, we planned an open pit there as well, but as we re-examine this, this new piece that we've added on, we see the underground potential to bulk mine there. It has a higher strip ratio in an open pit scenario than the north, but the, the bulk mining potential underground, which still can be relatively cheap, uh, versus say mining something that's a meter wide underground or mining something that can be 30 plus meters wide underground. Um, the cost obviously for the 30 meters is much um, cheaper per ton. There's one term in underground mining that's very, very important when you talk about a deposit and it's mm -hmm. ounces per vertical meter. It's almost a term that would be synonymous with um, open pit mining strip ratio because mm -hmm. if you have as you're going down in a mine uh, different elevations if you have a lot of ounces per 
meter that you have to sink, that means you, you have a lot less development cost to get to ore tons. So we see Los Rico South as having a very, very uh, good ounces per vertical meter. So it should be lower development costs. And then when you have wide, wide mining zones underground, um, your, your dilution and dilution, you have that both in open pits and, and underground, but it's more of a factor in underground, especially if you're dealing with some of our peers who have ore zones that are only a meter wide, very, you know, very high grade, but a meter wide. Yeah. If you're mining a meter wide, it's very difficult in a lot of cases not to get at least 50% of waste coming in on that blast when you blast it out, diluting that grade that you drilled with waste. You know, you have to be very surgical. Now, if we're going to be mining something 15 meters wide, maybe we're still bringing in a meter of waste, but that's, you know, that's one over 15. Yeah, yeah. Not, you know, one over one. Not a yeah, 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 dilution. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's like 6% dilution. So that's a big difference. And that's why having wide widths, you suffer far less dilution. And you can change the method that you're mining. If you're mining something a meter wide, it's very surgical. And it's, it's less mechanized. You know, it's a, it's a miner mm -hmm. with what's called a jack leg, a drill. A man holding it, drilling it. If you're mining something 15 meters wide, you do a thing called a long hole mining where you're yeah. more mechanized and much, much more productive and lower cost. Well, ours is that kind of 15 plus meter wide. And the big difference, and I'd like to really stress this point, we believe, especially what we're adding, we have those kind of grades that people are finding in the meter wide, but in 15 meters wide. We have the wide width and we have the high grades. That's nice this, this is is fantastic, Brad, and I would like to thank you I mean, for making this explanation because uh, our podcast obviously it's about interviewing and knowing companies like yours, but as well it's an educational program. And then to have the attention or to bring the attention uh, to people that it's learning or investors that are learning in the sector, and you bring the attention to some special points that most of the companies obviously didn't bring out or didn't explain because it's not one of their strengths. Um, now we will talk a little bit more of detail between Rico's North and Rico South. Let's just start with the South that has a more advanced story and have already a PAA uh, for this part of the project. Uh, yeah. Los Rico South seems a very interesting project. The main characteristic that I could found, IIR of 46% at $21 silver, uh, one thousand five hundred fifty dollar ounce of gold, with uh, as you said, a main operation being an open pit, but have some underground as well. Five thousand tons per day mill with eleven years mine, all include sustained cost below twelve, which is a very good numbers in general, and above most of developing uh, projects. Uh, are you working now on a prefeasibility study or what are you are what is the evolution or, or, or the timeline uh, for the next steps for the project? Yes, um, so that was our PEA and we are working on a uh, prefeasibility study um, which we're well well uh, close we were close to com uh, completing. The only thing is that we've had a new opportunity in Los Rico South with the addition of these new claims, which we announced two weeks mm -hmm. ago, called the Eagle. Uh, that was something um, that we were working on for well over a year. And why it's so important to us is that the structure where we defined 83 million ounces of uh, silver equivalent, that structure is a regional structure that goes for tens of kilometers. And we had a, a break in our claim package where we had that structure. We defined 83 million ounces. Then it went off onto a contiguous claim, which we didn't have for 3.7 kilometers. And then it went back onto our claims. So we really wanted to get that other 3.7. Now we got in there and we started drilling even in uh, almost a due diligence phase. And while we were completing 
the the uh, agreement, and uh, we were able to get some drill holes in. And we released those um, uh, two weeks ago, where we had uh, up to oh, in excess of seventy meters at uh, half a kilo, and uh, twelve meters of uh, over two kilos. So we think there's the opportunity, and we'll have a lot more drilling coming out over the mm -hmm. every two weeks to define more and more of that wide high grade. Um, so you were back to, back to the PEA and the pre-feasibility study. Um, we think it's going to change the opportunity so much, these new ounces, this new claim, that really we're reworking that pre-feasibility study that we're getting close to releasing. And um, we're going to come out in the, we hope to come out in the first quarter of next year with a new resource incorporating those new ounces on that new claim that we added. And also maybe at that time we'll update the PEA because that would be quite easy. Yeah. Maybe at the same time as a resource, because we want people to see the impact of these new high grade wide ounces. And we think there's a opportunity, you know, to double or maybe even more of that, um, net present value that we have in the current PEA. And also um, we, we feel that uh, by second quarter next year, we should be able to release that pre-feasibility study. And, and also um, we want to get apply for permit uh, in the next 60, 90 days. And we'd hope that mid next year we'd have permit and next fall we'd actually start to construct. Uh, the wow. uh, processing facility. So with this, this is a real um, crucial thing or a real great opportunity that has happened for the company in the last two weeks, getting this new claim package that we have added on. It gives us another lever to pull in developing the whole district because it's very high grade, it's wide, it should generate we would think that it would generate um, a lot of cash flow quickly. And if we develop that first, that could be the catalyst that develops the whole district, Los Ricos North and Los Ricos South. So that is really our focus over the coming be years. Because yeah. this, uh, in, in not to for the people to get um, or to the audience to, to understand it, this new um, piece of land that uh, it's closer to the south, or it's closer to the to the Ricos North, or it's in the opposite direction, or it's opposite direction. It's in Los opposite Rico direction. South. Yes, Los, Los Ricos South. We had a break in the claim package. Yeah, and that's we now have that break. We own perfect. it. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Then um, I guess that. All of this will change, no? But the grades that you have right now, I mean, are uh, in uh, we are in the south, right? In the south, yeah. are just one, uh, just below one gram per ton, which is amazing for an open pit. But it might be concerning for the under underground work. Yeah. Uh, what is your opinion? I mean, it all depends, I guess, of uh, how will be uh, this new drilling. Uh, also, I could see that there is some. Uh, historical underground levels. I don't know if uh, you plan to use this already uh, facility there or what is what is your thoughts about this? Yeah, um, it, it's actually one gram gold plus silver. So it's about two and ah. a quarter, quarter grams gold equivalent. Okay. And um, there was a operation already there in, in the last century from 1908 to 1929. It was a famous family in the mining industry, the Daly family, who was Anaconda, um, or the U.S. They uh, operated a very professional underground mine there. They produced about a million ounces of gold equivalent. Um, the new piece that we've added on was a different company. They did not have a large scale production, and um, it looks like it's all intact. What we're the okay. new, what we're finding um, the in the pre feed or the PEA. Um, the plan was to have an open pit around the area where it was already quite heavily mined and mm -hmm. below that an underground. So it will probably still in that area, it will remain that way. We would have an open pit. I think a smaller open pit and more, a larger underground, underground. because 
right now in Mexico, under the current administration, you know, they're, they're more readily giving out uh, underground permits than they are open pit permits, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. I think under uh, the next administration, even if it's the same party, um, you know, that may change. And uh, we see that in the south, we could mine the whole thing underground. Perfect. And, or we could have a pit. But when you're looking at, um, you know, an open pit or underground, they're, they're different in this sense. If I'm planning to do an open pit and I'm modeling that resource, which goes into the economic study, I will use lower cutoff grades um, for defining what will be ore. And, of course. And then it will bring down that overall average. If we're looking at it in the underground bulk mining sense, our cutoff for what rock we're going to leave behind and, and never move is going to be higher. So in a, you could think of it probably in an underground or an open pit sense, maybe we'd use 30 grams. Uh, well, I'm going to, uh, look, I'll talk here in, in gold. Mm -hmm. Maybe 0.3 grams gold equivalent for a cutoff in an open cool. pit sense, or even, even lower. In uh, underground, we'd probably use more like 1.25 grams gold right. equivalent. And... Um, so the tonnage will go down and the grade will go up. And even re-logging re what we already had in that study and using the higher cutoff grades and being more selective, the tonnage would drop, but the grade would go up substantially. And it would be very, we feel that it would be a very good grade for bulk underground mining and moving from, you know, your two and a half grams more up towards at least your five grams. And there is a, a sensitivity analysis in the current study that shows that as well. But it was modeled as an open pit. That sensitivity analysis wouldn't be quite apples to apples, wouldn't be quite totally relevant because we would model the resource differently if we're planning to mine underground. Perfect, perfectly explained. Yeah. Then just move to the north. The, the north, Los Ricos North, seems massive in terms of indicated reserve, almost double the gold or silver equivalent of the south. Los yeah. Ricos North is a series of deposits where we can highlight El Orito and El Favor. Most interestingly, El Favor is open to depth and at east, showing the possibility to significantly increase the reserves of the deposit. What mm -hmm. is your opinion about... Uh, this part of the deposit and how much do you think that can be extended? I, I think there's a good opportunity to extend it. And, um, and I would say that it is uh, the same kind of um, relevance as um, it's, it's very similar to Los Rico South, except that um, it probably has a lower strip ratio, a little bit broader zones hmm. um, in Los Ricos North. Uh, I would also say that, um, you know, if you, if you look at it and, and extending, especially Favor uh, to the east, uh, that's possible. Um, and then you have to, you know, corporately, you come to a, a decision, you know, we're going to spend $25 million a year on exploration development. And you're going to say which uh, those, of those dollars being spent, um, then the decision, corporate decision comes in. And for us, we've decided that Los Rico South is nearer term cash flow, nearer term to being a mine. If we spend a large portion of that 25 million over, say, the next 12 months in Los Ricos North, we're spending our capital on ounces that might be 15 years out into the future. So on a corporate level, um, we're saying, hey, let's direct our capital spend on exploration to Los Rico South, those ounces are going to be produced first. Let's find more high, high grade ounces in uh, Los Rico South. But in the same time in Los Rico North, let's take what we have today, it's a large amount of ounces, and let's put those in a preliminary economic mm -hmm. assessment so people can start putting a capital or not a capital, well, yes, a capital number and a how we see the development. So we, the, the Los Rico North and Los Rico South are very similar. They're very similar in metallurgy. 
they're less, if there's any difference, I would say less frequent north. The zones are a bit broader, um, probably more amenable to open pit mining at lower strip ratios, but can still be underground bulk mined. We see as a company uh, corporately that we want to spend our next capital uh, dollars expiration and development dollars in Los Rico South, where the ounces are closer to production. And we want to um, fully develop that because it's going to be producing sooner. And we'll get back to Los Ricos North finding more and more ounces, but in the future, because those more and more ounces are ounces that will be developed and produced maybe, you know, 12, 15 years from now, hmm. not developed, but produced. Why so near-term yeah. dollars are near-term ounce cash flow. It's a, it's a perfect corporate strategy. I mean, for me, uh, always that I look to the map and your news and so, I always thought if Los Ricos itself, it can be, one massive district in a way that you can bring together both using the same infrastructure or if you will put some infrastructure in the middle between the deposits in order to be useful for both mines or if maybe you could through exploration and you know the deposit can be extend from north to south in some way i don't know what are your thoughts about this how do you think that this will develop. Obviously, you said the first, you will go for the south, that it's closer to production. But are you thinking to use this infrastructure, uh, uh, processing mills or whatever, uh, for later in the north or for having both at the same time producing at some point? Yes, you know, we, we did look at that. And that's, a, you know, something that's it's a good question and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, there's about 15 kilometers in a straight line between Los Ricos mm -hmm. North and Los Ricos South. And actually, you know, navigating a road between the two would be quite a bit further than that. So there is quite a distance as far as trucking, especially if you look at the, um, although the ore in the North is, is good values for an open pit, um, it's still not the high, high, high grade that you could truck for tens of kilometers. So um, we view them as two separate uh, processing facilities. And um, there's be some synergy would be more along uh, logistics and maybe as far as when you're in production, one, um, you know, operational mill or uh, sorry, laboratory for hmm. production samples that hmm. you would have between the two projects. But uh, they, they will be two separate processing facilities in our view. Good. There is any, uh, I mean, because when I heard some interviews a uh, few years ago, uh, there, there was a rumor that you might uh, sell one of the two deposits in order to construct the other. Is this something that it's on the table if someone arrives with a good offer? Or are you guys planning to construct both mines? Well, you know, um, you control what you can control. And, uh, you know, uh, what we can control is um, being very focused on finding ounces, developing the deposits and, and building them when it's time to build them, which in Los Rico South, we're moving quickly towards that. What we can't control is if uh, somebody comes with a very good offer. From my experience in the past in selling deposits or selling companies, usually your best offers come when you're pouring the foundations because you've limited the risk. Yeah, You're at reduced risk. Uh, in this case, these are very good deposits. We'll focus on getting them into production. I myself am the second or third largest shareholder of the company. Mm -hmm. I think I'm well aligned with all of our shareholders. If somebody comes with a, a very, very reasonable offer, we'd obviously take it to our shareholders. And uh, it's ultimately, it's about returning good value for our shareholders. But Perfect. We can control building it. We can't control what happens in other people's boardrooms. Perfect. Then, as a sort of summary to close this part, uh, for someone that will invest today in Google, what are what they could expect to see in a year's time? I think in um, Google, in a year's time, we're going to have a new resource in Las Vegas South. We, in a year's time, we will have a pre-feasibility study. Um, we, we hope to be in a year's time breaking ground and building Los Rico South, building a mill. 
in Los Ricos North, in, in the coming months, we'll have a um, preliminary economic assessment. And additionally, in Los Ricos North, or South, I'm sorry, you're going to be seeing a lot of news flow around drill results and more and more discovery. So really, the next year in Gold Gold is going to be very, very exciting and with a tremendous amount of news flow. And um, really, that's, that's what you can expect. Uh, you know, we can't control what happens with commodity price, but if you're dealing with companies that are well financed, like we are with 75 million US cash, no debt, um, you know, with good technical expertise, um, you know, we've been, we built four mines in the past and uh, we have an operations team who are very, very good. A lot of experience in Mexico over 26 years I've been there. Um, then it, it sets you up for success. Uh, those are really some of the qualities I think that your investors should be looking for in junior mining companies. Perfect. Then we just go through a couple of questions about management and country. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Could you explain a little bit uh, the Go Gold team, they experience? You said that you have experience in uh, construction and exploration. Do you have all the knowledge that you need to perform the plans that are ahead this year and the follower ones? Yeah, from a, from a management perspective, high, you know, high level management mm -hmm. perspective and, and uh, a technical expertise in our operations team, we, we certainly do. Uh, that's not to say that we will not add people to the team. Um, in January, we plan to uh, go underground at Los Rico South and we'll bring in a contractor first to do that. Um, but, you know, we will increase our team around uh, supervision and uh, supervision of the contractor as far as uh, strong underground people. Now, in my career in mining, I've, I've done more underground mining than I've done open pit. I've done both, but more underground. So it's, it's nothing that we're not familiar with. Um, yes, we do have the technical ability. Obviously, we're going to grow the scope of what we're doing and we'll be adding more people to the team. I'd say one other thing about Go Gold and uh, operating in Mexico for 26 years now, um, what we quickly realized is that the expertise exists in the country. It has mm -hmm. 450 years of mining history, lots and lots of mining in Mexico. We don't have to bring in a lot of um, expats to mm -hmm. operate our company in Mexico. Where it's all nationals. There's only okay. like five of us who are not Mexican out of 350 people. Perfect. Talking about the country, no? uh, some uh, mining companies like Fortuna Silver had problems renewing some permits in Mexico. Is Mexico still a good country for the mining industry? Yeah, in my opinion, I, I do believe it is. I mean, it's um, you'll have different administrations will come and go every six years in Mexico. Uh, but... Um, you know, and the current administration, I, I still find that they're uh, very reasonable to deal with in, in, uh, in our operations. Um, I would, that particular case, I, I don't know all the particulars about it, mm -hmm. but it was resolved and they yes. did get their permit. And um, so, um, you know, the current administration, uh, they're, they're um, you know, uh, I, I don't know if their focus is as much around mining as other administrations. Um, they have a real focus on um, anti-corruption, and mm -hmm. I think they've done a very good job there. Um, and, uh, you know, I see Mexico as a, a very, very good country to operate in. And uh, most importantly, I talk to a lot of our institutional investors, and, and they still view Mexico as a, a very good juris jurisdiction to uh, operate you, in. You, you told me before that 50%, roughly 50% of your shareholder institutionals uh, can you name some of them, maybe? Yes, um, we would have uh, Vanek, mm -hmm. a very um, large uh, institution, Franklin Templeton, Sprott Asset Management, um, uh, Merck, CI Investments, uh, Earth Resources out of Europe, Ixos out of Paris, um, Fourth Sale out of uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, 
So we're held very, you know, in, yeah. heavily institutional and, and around the planet. Perfect. Uh, what do you think that is the main risk for Go Gold uh, for developing these projects? And what you are doing to mitigate that risk? Well, you know, we'd have the normal technical risks that you'd have with any uh, development project. And those would be, you know, um, you know, metallurgy, um, resource uh, estimates. But, you know, I think we've done a very, very good technical job to mitigate those those risks. Um, you know, uh, construction risk, the normal. I mean, uh, obviously, supply chain has been an issue for many uh, companies um, as they develop mines right now. But, um, you know, we're working to mitigate those, you know, things like um, we would uh, look for, it's a long lead time for, say, a brand new mill, hmm. the actual mill. But, you know, we can look at the used market and rebuild as well to uh, reduce that uh, time timeline. Um, basically, I, I think we have normal risks that are mitigated by strong technical experience, um, you know, strong, we're strongly capitalized. We have a good institutional following, um, you know, to finance our uh, projects that, you know, that are well validated by our team. So there's always risk. This is not a low risk industry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, you look for the track record and you look for, um, you know, look for the project. And we have a strong project. We're not, we're not here trying to develop a marginal project. Yes. That is very subject to commodity risk, a marginal project. This is a high grade project and should be low money costs. So that's one of the risks that you can lease control is commodity price. But the only thing you can do is to have high margin projects, very high quality projects, which is what we have in Los Ricos. And that mitigates that risk of commodity risk. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Brad, for your time. It was a pleasure to have Go Gold to the program. I hope to see the great things uh, over the next year, and I hope that uh, you can come again and share them with us. If you want the last minute to talk to the audience. Yeah, I, I think um, thank you uh, for um, your interest in the company. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time. We have a very experienced team in the capital markets. Our list of investors says a lot. They're very experienced investors in, in this business. And we have a strong projects. And the next year, two years, is going to be very, very exciting for Gold Gold. We're entering a rapid growth uh, phase in the company with a high quality project and a very strong balance sheet. It should be a lot of, it should be rewarding for the investors. Thank you. Este podcast no deja de ser un relato personal de mi camino para aprender en el mundo de la inversión de las materias primas. En este podcast vamos a intentar sacar contenido educativo, entrevistas con empresas y tesis de inversión para que juntos podamos aprender de este fascinante mundo del subsuelo. Si crees que el contenido vale la pena, por favor dale me gusta, suscríbete al canal y compártelo. Soy Amadeo Bonet, bienvenido a Charlando de Minas.